It has been only a month since AMD launched the 7900 XT and XTX cards, but AMD thought why not just expose the real value of these cards by comparing them to the 6000 series. And so AMD set up a test rig with a Ryzen 7900X and benchmarked 11 GPUs from the latest 7000 as well as 6000 series GPUs. These were 6 different titles that included COD Modern Warfare 2, GTA 5 and some eSport titles. But instead of proving the 7900 GPUs to be actually better, AMD just published numbers that tell us otherwise. If you see the chart, you can see that even though the 7900 XT is faster than the 6950 XT, the gap is still not significant. What's interesting is that the 7900 XT is actually considered to be a better value GPU compared to the RTX 4070 Ti, but here the 6950 XT is looking very close to the 7900 XT's performance. At 4K resolution, the 7900 XT is just 7% faster, but as of now the 6950 XT is super cheap compared to its launch date, and this makes it a significantly better value card at 29% lower price compared to the 7900 XT. The gap closes even further when the games are run at 1080p resolution. Here you can see that the 7900 XT is just 5% faster than the 6950 XT and it feels like AMD is just trying to tell the people, hey don't buy the 7900 XT because it's more expensive. I believe that AMD is trying to clear its 6000 series inventory quickly so that people can switch to the 7000 series which at that point will be the only one you will be able to find on the shelves. At this point the CPU sales are at a historic low and not only GPUs are affected by this but CPUs are also selling worse than ever. Here I am talking about Intel specifically because Intel just published its earning report for the fourth quarter of 2022 and it has been the worst for Intel in several years. It is reported that Intel has lost close to $700 million in the fourth quarter of 2022 alone and the revenue has been historically low. Even though it was doing quite fine last year, the fourth quarter was the time when the sales declined so much that the revenue dropped to 32% compared to Q4 2021. So we can see here the revenue is down to $14 billion from $20.5 billion in 2021 and similarly the net income is 60% down from $19.9 .9 billion in 2021 to $8 billion in 2022. Of course this has given a big shock to Intel because it is one of the biggest if not the biggest loss Intel has seen in several years. And that too when it already has great offerings for customers in both mainstream desktop and server industries. Well Intel is not one of those companies that are going to grieve over this for long and it has some solid plans ahead for both 2023 and 2024. We can expect Intel to launch Meteor Lake CPUs this year that are going to be the first to feature chiplet design followed by Lunar Lake the next year. And of course, Intel is also working on its ARC GPUs to make them better at gaming. As a recent report from PC Games Hardware suggests that Intel is readying a major driver update. The source says that we have heard from well-informed circles, Intel is currently preparing a major driver update that is intended to increase performance across the board. Apparently, one of the undoubtedly existing breaks has been identified and eliminated. This can significantly change things in favor of Intel because ARC GPUs need to be optimized for the DirectX 9 API for older games. Currently poor driver support is one of the primary reasons why users still prefer Nvidia and AMD but if everything goes in the right direction, we could see Intel coming as a powerful competitor in the GPU industry in a few years. However, Intel still needs to make enough GPUs to fulfill the demands as there are only one or two AIBs that are making Intel GPUs right now. With only two ARC GPUs in the market, Intel also needs to release its mid-range option which is the ARC A580. It would be even great if Intel releases a new rumored ARC GPU which is assumed to be the A550 with 256 compute units as seen on CompuBench. We cannot say for sure if this is definitely the A550 but let's hope that this goes this way because this will give us more options to choose from at a time when there are not enough GPUs in the price range of $200 to $300. That's it for today, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.